Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my dear friends Allah bless you all I pray you're all well okay so alhamdulillah let's resume and uh, al-fatiha بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تفرحه وتسعده وترضيه واجزه بها عنا ما هو أهله يا أرحم الراحمين وآله وسلم اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا ورض عنا يا كريم so, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us once more. more. And so we can look at um, the verses of Surah At-Tawbah again. And so <coughs> yesterday we ended on this discussion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want the munafiqoon to go with the believers to the campaign of the book. Why? Simply because their whole goal and focus, had they all gone, would have been to sow discord and cause problems amongst the believers. So to save the believers from this tribulation, they didn't go. Allah put this laziness inside them <coughs> and their cowardice took over and they decided, fine, we won't go. And the few that did go, they did try a few things, but, you know, Allah protected the believers. So... He continues now and telling uh, tells us that causing fitna and problems for the believers has been an old habit of theirs, and they've been they've been trying it for a long time. So he says, "لَقَدِ بَتَغَوُ الْفِتْنَةَ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَقَلَّبُوا لَكَ الْأُمُورَ حَتَّى جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَظَهَرَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ وَهُمْ كَارِهُونَ." They had already sought to spread discord before and devised every possible plot against you, O Prophet, until the truth came and Allah's will prevailed, much to their dismay. <coughs> so, he's saying, by God, wallahi, laqad, truly, he's swearing an oath that ibtaghaw, really, they really saw and desired with, you know, everything they could do, they really wanted to bring this about. What? Fitna. Fitna, as we know, the, the root word, Tells us about gold being heated to, to test its purity. But the root indicates something being shaken and it's not firm and, and, and stable. It's shaken, so metaphorically the gold is heated, the molecules shake, you could say. It melts. So to put someone or something in a state where its stability goes and it, it's, you know, it's on shaky ground, so to speak. <coughs> this is what they wanted, and uh, uh, this is what they wanted for a long time. So he says, Min Qablu. <coughs> As we know, Min Qablu means just before. So, by God, they've been wanting this fitna, this tribulation, these problems to occur amongst the ranks of the believers for a long time. But he's put the, the word Min Qablu there just before. Uh, why? In order to show it's a steady pattern. So even though it was like almost a decade, and he's saying just before, you know, this is what they were doing. Uh, it's just like if something was to happen the day before yesterday, and then yes yesterday, and then today, you kind of expect it to happen because it's, it's a running pattern. Long gaps in time uh, kind of make people think that, well, maybe it won't happen now. It's been such a long time. <coughs> but expressing it as min qablu just before, it's it's showing that no that it had, they haven't stopped. They've continued. So what what is this talking about? The ulama talk about the fitna, you know, the the battle of Badr. They weren't happy. They didn't want to join, and <coughs> and look what that did. When the believers won, they were miserable. Right, and then many of them entered into Islam, like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salud and others. They decided, okay, something could happen here. Let's just join. But they kept their kufr inside. They didn't really want to believe. I mean, qablu, right? And then the Battle of Uhud. How many set off from Medina? A thousand. And then when they got there, 
uh, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul took 300 back and said, oh, I don't think there's even going to be a fight. So he left with his people and the believers were left with 700 people to face 3,000. And, you know, talk about a betrayal. Right? And then they, throughout that period they've been, you know, conspiring <coughs> either with the, <coughs> the traitorous uh, um, uh, tribes around them or the Jews in Medina uh, or Quraysh. They were constantly planning uh, to harm the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes that clear. And he said, وَقَلَّبُوا لَكَ الْأُمُورِ Right? So one of the meanings of this qallaba to turn something upside down and <clears throat> but one of the meanings is this is when you think of every possibility, every possible eventuality. So what they do what they were doing is they were it's like you know when qallab al amr like you can almost say like you were inspecting something, you've turned it upside down to see what's in there. So they considered every single possibility in in many scenarios to find a way to harm the believers that's what their plan was that's what they were doing they were they were thinking of and conceiving of every possible plot and scheme to harm the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam all the believers will see another one that they did you know those who went with the prophet on the the book campaign they tried something the quran will uh, uh, allude to it later <coughs> anything they could do to harm the believers their schemes were working and if they thought okay if this doesn't work we can do this if that doesn't work we'll do this everything they could do and you can see the type of person that's coming out now uh, a munafiq is not uh, a pleasant person a munafiq is not a good person even in matters of you know dunya where deen's not involved this person is traitorous and um <sighs> You can't trust them. I mean, just look at. I mean, a, a good example of the qualities of nifaq you'll find is Iago in Othello, right? Shakespeare's Othello. This man, although he's being nice and sweet to Othello, you know, when he's speaking to him, he's feeding Othello's, you know, jealousy. And this man is he's exactly what we're talking about. This type of quality, although there it wasn't the issue of iman and kufr. Here it is, but the same kind of plotting and scheming and conniving uh, you know attitude and thoughts and you know mindset that's what they had and so then he says subhanahu wa ta'ala al haqqu until so they kept doing this over and over and over and over looking at things you know one way or another trying to find a way to harm the believers until the absolute, until the truth, the, 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 the appropriate fitting truth, meaning Allah's help and support for the believers, this divine succor that came, you know, where they ended up as being the major power in the Arabian, Arabian Peninsula. They conquered Mecca. <coughs> the Prophet wasallam had the largest army up, up until that point historically in, <coughs> in Arabia. And so all of that happened. And... <coughs> they kept doing this, right? So, وَظَهَرَ أَمْرُ اللَّهِ And the matter of Allah. So, you can say the matter or um, the command of Allah. Um, so, the matter, meaning that, or you can say the command of Allah, that Allah wanting His religion to be the, the most prominent religion there. That is one uh, way, or you can interpret it as matter, and that, the same meaning would be there, right? وَهُمْ كَارِهُونَ Whilst with a nominal sentence here, whilst they, whom carry who, nominal sentence, to show fixed, firm, this is their reality. Whilst they were hating it, they were hating the matter unfolding before their eyes. Allah gave victory to the Prophet wasallam and the believers over and over and over again. And they were seeing it unfold and they were detesting it honestly so this is the problem you know whether it was the hasad or just the fact that they didn't like the believers whatever it was allah showed them that exactly what you didn't want to happen 
I've made it happen. So that's exactly what happened. So Abu Surud says that uh, this and the previous verse are both there as consolation for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers uh, regarding you know the consolation of uh, in these people who didn't turn up <coughs> to the to the battle because uh, in military campaigns you know if you're looking at the means then numbers count like Abdullah bin Ubay uh, taking the 300 people away at Uhud that was a big thing right because numbers can count okay ultimately Allah gives victory but it's through means and so them them leaving and not t- going to Tabuk it just gives comfort, consolation for them and it's so ex- explain, explaining why Allah kept them behind because there's a wisdom in that and exposing their secrets and exposing what they're really like now this these sorts of verses these people were shocked at and you know the munafiqun and they were like how how are we getting exposed private discussions they would have would be exposed in the quran and they were getting you know worried and shocked at that and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing that their excuses were all false right they, that you know um <clears throat> you know they didn't have uh, any 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 real genuine reason to not go but they just you know run to the prophet just to make a, a false excuse to go out uh, and fight <coughs> to prevent uh, so they don't have to so this is a, this is what it is the consolation is really strong in, in these verses and they didn't have any legitimate reason to stay so then he says وَمِنْهُمْ يَقُولُ إِذَنْ لِإِذَنْ لِي Or you can see when you recite it وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ إِذَنْ لِي وَلَا تَفْتِنِّي أَلَا فِي الْفِتْنَةِ سَقَطُوا وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ لَمُحِيطَةٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ This is an extremely eloquent verse just because of the word choices let alone other matters and honestly when Let's just look at it. He says, there are some who say, exempt me and do not expose me to temptation. They are, they have already fallen into temptation and hell will surely engulf uh, the disbelievers. Uh, Abu Saud, mashallah, he's on top form here, radiallahu anhu. And, <clears throat> you know, he, so he says here, وَمِنْ هُمَّ يَقُولُ ذَلِّي لِي That um, one of the, you know, amongst them are those or there's an individual, it could be a group or an individual who says, permit me, i.e. exempt me, permit me to stay behind, exempt me. Uh, taftinni, and don't put me in a situation where I'm going to be tempted, right? Or, um, which is the sin, right? The sin of not going. He's saying, what is he saying? <coughs> this person came to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or these people, and saying, I'm not going regardless, but permit me to stay because then I won't I won't be blamed, criticized, and I won't I won't be sinning. I don't think they really cared about sinning because they were disbelievers. Uh, but he's saying that if if you permit me to stay, then I won't I won't be pr- criticized, and I won't be you know I won't be committing a sin. Uh, that's one interpretation. Or there's another one where he could say. Don't put don't put me into a fitna. Don't put me into a tribulation. Meaning, exposing me to death. If I go there with you, I could die. I don't want that. So don't don't do that to me, and <coughs> permit me to stay. So this is what they were saying. There is another narration. If you look at the asbab and nuzul, the contextual causes of the revelation of verses, there's there's a narration which is also possible and could be applied here. <coughs> but I do think that the verse's uh, indication, as Abu Saud has put it, is broader than just what this uh, narration indicates. So Abdullah bin Abbas and others narrated that um, there was a man called Jaddi bin Qais, right, Munafiq. And he went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, The Ansar know that I, you know, I'm just crazy about women, he's saying. And so he's saying, so don't, don't, put me into this tribulation by making me go there he said if because if i see the roman uh, the ladies the roman ladies i don't think I'll, I'll be able to control myself meaning i'll fall into zina right so he's trying to be pious pretending to be you know righteous that I, I'll, I'll fall into zina so don't you know just i can't control myself so let me just stay behind and uh, <coughs> you know 
and he said so I want I said and but I'll give you some money so you can go uh you know so so let me stay that's what one narration is and it's just a lie it's just a lie it's just a false excuse even if this is what the verse is uh referring to the, the meaning is general and you can uh, the, the general meaning of Abu put can apply to more than one person here but <clears throat> you know <clears throat> and also man can refer to a number of people, not just women whom men and um, amongst them are those, or you can say amongst them is he who said. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this adatul istiftah, this uh, rhetorical device that basically says, listen up, understand this. <clears throat> Because these munafiqun, they think, well, we've got out of the uh, military campaign. We don't have to go and fight. We don't have to go and do anything. We're okay. Yeah, there's no fitna for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah! <sighs> it's so beautiful. Pay attention. Listen. Fil fitnati sakatu. It's so beautiful. He says <clears throat> that they, that they, uh, so he says, and don't, wala taftani, and don't put, don't put me into a tribulation. He says, Allah, listen up. In a tribulation, they have actually fallen, right? So they've actually done that which would <coughs> offend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they are in a tribulation, right? The fact that they, they you know, that they, they, they don't have to go is, hasn't rescued them. But no, their determination to say, okay, we're not going to go, the, the, you know, the cheek that they have, you know, to go and actually ask for permission was saying, look, well, not, well we're not really going to go. You might as well just permit us. <coughs> and then sitting, <laughs> sitting around afterwards while others go, you know, uh, to the military campaign. <laughs> for the defense of the believers, all of this, <coughs> all of this indicates that their whole situation, their life choices are a bigger fitna, right? They are they're such a big fitna. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really saying with the Allah that this big fitna, they don't even see that they're in a fitna, right? The bigger tribulation is that they don't want to be involved with anything to do with what Allah has commanded and that's the bigger fitna. And the, there's a beauty in this, in the wording. He used the word saqatu, that they've fallen. And Abu Saud and others, uh, and Imam Alusi say that his use of the word saqatu, meaning that they've fallen, indicates that they've plunged to the very depths of being the lowest of the law. That's why, you know, disbelievers have their punishment in hell. But the lowest level of hell, <coughs> where the punishment is the worst, <coughs> is reserved for these people, reserved for the, uh, the, the munafiqun. And if this is the reason why, pretending to be believers and trying to subvert and under, undermine, you know, uh, uh, the cause of God. And then what else is actually beautiful is that the sakat also, they've fallen, it's like they're just plunging and falling, right? And without them even realizing. And then he says, وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ Nominal sentence. وَإِنَّ Directly connected to the fact that they've, they've fallen into a fitna. وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ لَمُحِيطَةٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ And then before we look at the rest, Jahannam, I've said before that, you know, there's a couple of possible roots of this word. One is Jaham for uh, someone frown, frowning. <clears throat> people frown out of anger so jahannam is the place where allah's anger is manifested yeah so their lies their manipulation their deception has angered allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're gonna go and <clears throat> they're gonna they're gonna go to to hell for that but the other root word is rakiya jahannam like a really deep well and just look at uh, so both the possible and even together. So just look at look just look at this meaning together that that they're in a fitna. They're in a fitna and they've fallen into a fitna. And Allah says use the word for Jahannam next, which is a really deep well. So they're falling into this. It's as though now their action has caused them to fall on the day of judgment into hell and deep far 
right to the bottom of hell. It's incredible. Just, the, just the, the 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 nuance for the wording and the choice together is really beautiful. Allah fil fitna fil fitna ti sakadu in fitna itself. He put it before, he, saying that they fa- they fallen. He could have said, Allah sakatu fil fitna, that they fallen into a fitna. No, in a tribulation itself, they have fallen, and then we inna no that you know it's connected to this fitna that they're falling into, that jahannam, this deep pit, <coughs> where Allah's anger is manifested. La it surrounds them from all other, from all angles. Right, and meaning it contains all of them. Every single one of those munafiqun are going to be there, and he says it's completely surrounding them. Nominal sentence. This is fixed, firm, not changing. La muhiyatun bil kafirin. It surrounds all of the kafirin, all of the disbelievers. So either to say that this is because of their disbelief that they're going to be <coughs> in hell, or that the fitna that they want is you know a manifestation of dis- disbelief, and because of that they're going to be in hell or hell surrounds all disbelievers includes all of them especially this lot especially this group and both of them are scary situations so then we're told in tusibka hasanatun tasu'hum wa in tusibka musibatun yaqulu qad akhadna amrana min qablu wa yatawalla wa hum farihun if a blessing falls on you, O Prophet, they will grieve. But if a disaster befalls you, they will say, we took our precaution in advance and turn away rejoicing. Look at this. These people, when dealing with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were supposedly believers and, you know, on his side and everything. So he says, Allah says, In tusibka hasanatum tasu'hum. Look at this. <coughs> if you're touched... If you're literally, if, if an arrow comes and s- hits the bullseye, so if if you're hit by something good, um, it bothers them, it uh, annoys them, it offends them. It, like in Arabic, they use the word takaddara, right? That you know, if you look at um, a pond, uh, all the sediment is on the ground and the water's clear, and then someone goes and jumps about in it, and all the the sediment moves up and down, it becomes muddy. So a person's all happy and everything's clear, and then something happens and it just really bothers them. Takadara, he becomes really muddied internally, and he's got no peace. He's agitated, annoyed, angered, flustered, bothered. You know that's what he's saying. So if the believers win a battle or win some, you know, some spells of war, some Something like this, it, it really annoys them and, uh, and bothers them. They, you know, they're frustrated by it. They can't sit, you know, comfortably. Why did this happen to them? Why did that good come to them? Right? This is the attitude. They don't care. And people like this, you know, <clears throat> you may see people like this. They don't care about anyone's well-being, just their own. So if that good comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is who's being addressed here, but also to the believers, it really bothers them, right? It's not just grief, it's like anger, frustration, hatred, you know, envy, all of these things. Tasu'hum, that it makes it so, is something horrible and disgusting, that it just, they're just annoyed by it, right? وَإِن تُصِيبَكَ مُصِيبَةٌ But if a calamity hits you And also the word musiba That is meant, both are meant They come from Allah, tests, right? يَقُولُوا uh, What will they say as a consequence? قَدْ أَخَذْنَا أَمْرَنَا مِنْ قَبْلُ We took our precaution in advance We made sure that <clears throat> we did everything we needed to do uh, to get away from from this. That yeah, you know what? We did, we're glad we didn't listen to you. We're glad we didn't follow you people into this situation where harm has come to you. We looked out for ourselves before. So it's as though they're saying, you know, what comes to you, you deserve it, and. You know, we're glad we didn't listen to you. We're glad we listened to ourselves and we took, you know, adequate precautions. So we're okay now and look at you. So both situations, so in the first you'd expect that for them to be happy that someone's being given something good. None of that. And the second, what happens is <coughs> that they show anger, uh, sorry, they show glee rejoicing and boasting if they've managed to escape a problem you know that hit the believers and then so what do they 
uh, uh, then say, wa, wa, he says, wa yatawallaw wa hum farihun. And then they turn away whilst being completely happy and ecstatic. They'll say this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What a thing to say to anyone, let alone to the greatest human being to ever walk the earth, right? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, they'll say this to the Prophet and then they'll just turn around and walk off full, like literally almost to bursting point with joy and happiness at the fact that something bad has happened to the believers. This, this is a horrible quality, right? Gloating and, you know... <coughs> laughing at <coughs> other people's misfortunes this is what they're doing and for what reason there is no genuine there's no there's no reason they don't have any good reason for this for this right but this is what they were doing and then they walk away thinking yeah ha ha look what happened to them but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the prophet a, a beautiful response for them Qul. <clears throat> لَن يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Say, nothing will ever befall us except what Allah has destined for us. He is our protector. So in Allah, let the believers put their trust. Okay. Firstly, he's saying, قُلْ Say, O Messenger, a direct command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to respond to you know, everything these people were saying. And uh, <coughs> so he, so he says, Allah. So he says, "Lain um, yusibana." Asaba yusiba, as I said, an arrow, uh, an arrow hit in the mark. So nothing will hit us. Say to them, O Messenger, nothing will hit us directly where it's meant to be, except for that which Allah has destined. For us, that's missing in the translation, destined for us in our favor, meaning for the believer, everything that happens, whether outwardly it seems good or bad, it's all good. And Allah has decreed it in our favor, as opposed to what happens to them, the happiness that they have and, you know, the joy that they feel when the believers, you know, suffer or the good that comes to them or the bad that they uh, experience, all of that is bad for them because of their kufr. So he says, Lay you see, but nothing will strike us exactly where it's meant to strike us, except for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the supreme king, has decreed for us. He does what he wants, but he's doing it. <coughs> with wisdom and it turns out for our benefit who a maulana he's our supreme ally right maula our supreme ally our ultimate ally our supreme master he's doing it all for us who do they have their own little click the only little click this group who they're walking about with and then when they're all gathered in hell none, none of them can do anything for each other None of it matters. Who are Mawlana? He is our supreme Allah. Then he says, Wa ala Allahi and in Allah, and you can say the quote ends here, like in the translation. Or <coughs> it continues right to the end of the verse. Wa ala Allahi and in Allah, Allah means on, but in English we've translated it as in. In Allah alone. So it's an obligation. In Allah alone, Allah, the Supreme King, who can do anything. Let the believers, the believers must put their trust. Tawakkul is when you choose Allah to do, to take care of a matter for you. You let go of it and all I can't do it here, you do it. Falyatawakkal al mu'minun those who have firm faith because if you have firm faith knowing that allah is your supreme allah your mawla whatever he's decreed for you is good for you he's taking care of you then that will make trusting allah easy and you do that you'll come out on top this is what he was saying to them subhanahu wa ta'ala okay so let's stop here and we shall continue inshallah ta'ala from this point onwards uh, allah bless you all وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم